How's it going guys and welcome to Formar Ranch. So today I have a 300 blackout build and what makes this one kind of interesting potentially is that it is an extreme budget build. I didn't want to cut corners too much to where it was going to be a total pile of junk but I did find some parts for it that were extremely reasonably priced assuming that they work well. So I'm going to go ahead and be the guinea pig for you guys today. I'm going to see if these budget parts work and ultimately guys show you the results. So first and foremost when I talk about build I'm talking about the upper receiver only. In fact I'm using an existing lower receiver bolt carrier group and charging handle that I already had and that's the beauty of AR-15s guys you can buy another upper you can build another upper and you can mix and match as long as you're within the legal realms of the law. I used to have a 10 inch 300 blackout build I never got around to sharing it with you guys I decided that there's really no point in having the 10 inch yes it's cool the 300 blackout works just great but with 16 inch barrel I get a little bit more velocity and this is going to be my latest and greatest hunting rig that I'll be sharing hunting videos with you guys. So let's go ahead and talk about what I put into it. So as far as parts go, I went with an upper receiver that was pre-assembled by Aero Precision. Now these guys are awesome. In terms of price, they really just can't be beat. You get a true mill spec part. It is, I have not seen anything less than quality from these guys. And again, they're not ripping you off. I see people too many times spend way too much money on upper and lower receivers for their AR-15s and really for no good reason. Yes, it's cool sometimes to have some big name brands on the side of your gun, but if you're like me and you don't care, you just want it to work and work well, Aero Precision is definitely the way to go. The handguard I went with is a Breek Arms 12 inch M-Lock. Now this is a company I had honestly not even heard of prior to searching for some quality handguards. Now this one kind of caught my eye in terms of aesthetics and so far so good. I don't notice any negative machine marks. I don't notice any blemishes. It seems very sturdy and strong and it's extremely lightweight for what you're getting. And I really liked how you can see a lot of the barrel and we'll get into why I wanted to do that here in a second. But it's looking good so far. My only concern is that I did not see any apparent ways to make it kind of anti-roll. It seems to be just kind of a friction fit clamping mechanism and hopefully over time I don't notice that the handguard starts to shift. But I will update you guys if that does occur. As far as the gas system goes, I went with a Brownells brand gas tube and a Yankee Hill gas block. So now the interesting part that we're really going to be focusing our attention on today is the barrel. So this is a Bear Creek Arsenal barrel. This is 16 inches again because I wanted to get that little extra velocity because this is going to be a hunting only gun. No tactical run and gun applications whatsoever. So I don't care that it's going to be long when it's suppressed. Um, it is stainless steel, which I, uh, after some research, you get a little bit better accuracy potentially. You usually spend a little bit more. This barrel is only $130 on their website. And what makes that price even better is the fact that it is fluted. So not only is it more aesthetically pleasing, but it is extra lightweight and has a little bit of uh, heat dissipation capabilities as well, which again will be perfect for hunting and when I'm carrying it around. As far as the muzzle device goes, I just have the Sig Sauer SRD 762 brake and that is because I run a Sig Sauer suppressor, especially when hunting. So I kind of had to go with that one. There's definitely uh, other muzzle devices that would probably be more budget suited. This one's only $90, so still uh, in terms of a, a brake for a suppressor, not too bad. They get a lot higher um, often, but uh, so that's the reason I went with that. Now in terms of optics, I have a Nikon M223. This is an old Gen 1 I had laying around from previous AR-15s. I'm going to go ahead and uh, slap it on in terms of uh, accuracy testing today. This optic that's going to stay on this uh, full time is going to be my ATN x 2 Again, this is just going to be a hog gun. But it's not really the best in terms of uh, precision shooting when you use that kind of night vision scope during the day. So. For test purposes, we're running a Nikon M223, and this is a 3 to 12 power scope, so it should give me decent groups. All right, this is going to be the first shots fired out of my latest 300 blackout build. Going three rounds of Remington Supersonic. Unsuppressed. All right, locked back. All right, so next I'm just going to go ahead and try three rounds of subsonic ammo. Now, obviously, there's really no point in shooting subsonic ammo unsuppressed. However, this is a good indicator to know if you got the gas length or the gas system uh, right. So I'm just going to go ahead and fire another three rounds, verify that it still functions unsuppressed. And that 
is exactly what you want to see and definitely makes you feel a whole lot better when you finish the build. All right, so let's go ahead and establish the testing conditions that I'm going to be using to verify whether or not the Bear Creek Arsenal barrel truly can be capable of one MOA accuracy. And again, on their website, they say that it is uh, guaranteed actually one MOA with quality ammo and good shooting fundamentals. So fair enough, we'll go ahead and test that out. Um, it's over 100 degrees out today, so I'm going to be shooting at 50 yards because I honestly am too lazy to walk that extra 50 yards there and back. Uh, so what we're going to do is, if, let's say we're off at an inch at 50 yards, we'll assume that that margin of error will stay uh, constant out to 100, so we'll count that as off as off by 2 inches. So I uh, will keep that in mind, and I'll remind you guys again when we look at those targets. I do have a variety of ammo that we're going to go ahead and test that I had laying around. We have some Winchester Deer Season Extreme Point. We have some regular American Eagle Full Metal Jacket, and we have Remington Supersonic and Subsonic Hollow Points. So we'll go ahead and uh, kind of you know test the bases all the way around we want to make sure that we test a bunch of different kinds of ammo none of this is uh, match grade by any means but uh, it's also not you know dirt quality ammo so we'll see how close we can get to that one MOA accuracy but first the American Eagle full metal jacket Another thing I'm going to do in between groups is definitely allow time for both the barrel and suppressor to cool so that the accuracy from group to group is not affected by the heating of the barrel and suppressor, just to keep things fair. Alright, so up next we got those cool looking Winchester Extreme Point rounds. All right, so up next is going to be the Remington Supersonic. This is a 120 grain hollow point open tip boat tail technically. Um, this was my previous 300 blackout hunting ammo. I never saw extreme precision out of it, but again, I would always sight it in with that uh, ATN X Sight 2, which is not the most ideal in terms of precision shooting. Alright, so our last group is going to be three rounds of subsonic. This is 220 grain open tip boat tail round. Alright, let's go down range and take a look at our groups. Alright, because I'm not too happy with the groups we're getting, my uncle's out here now and he's going to take a couple groups and we're going to make sure that it's not just the shooter, that it is in fact the gun that is not performing the way we'd expect. Alrighty guys, let's take a look at what we got. So as expected, our Federal FMJ, uh, not match ammo by any means, all over the place. And keep in mind, this was at 50 yards. So whatever you see here, double it at 100. So really, um, definitely not the best groups. I know what you guys are thinking right away. I am more than aware of that. Here's the Remington Supersonic. So roughly about an inch at 50 yards. You know, we'd estimate that'd be about two at 100. And the Subsonics actually did pretty good. Uh, they're a little under an inch, so they'd probably be under two inches, a little under two inches at 100. And then we have our Winchester Extreme Point. So I saw this group. Uh, I know for a fact I'm a better shooter than this. For those of you guys that are going to put in the comments below that this is my fault, please look at some of my other shooting videos, I guarantee you, and have evidence that I'm a better shooter than this. These are my results for today. You know, sometimes people have bad days, so I wanted to make sure, and we threw my uncle on. And this is how he did. So again, same results. And this is in the same order, guys. Federal FMJ, kind of all over the place. We got a little excited with the subsonic. It, uh, again, wasn't zeroed for any of these ammos, but just by coincidence, right in the bullseye. Like, could not be any more perfect. But then the next two were down here, so very inconsistent there. Um, the one that we were getting kind of excited for here was the Remington Supersonic. So he actually made him touch on one. But then he had a flyer, so again, jumping around, there's some deviation. And then finally with that Winchester Extreme Point, uh, roughly an inch group, and so at 200 yards, be two inches. So 
I did a lot of research prior to this, guys, uh, about the 300 blackout, and people are claiming it's kind of like an AK that you roughly get two inch groups at 100 yards. That is uh, what we're seeing today, but I got excited because of the fact that this company was claiming one MOA. I'm going to do a follow-up to this video uh, when the barrel gets a little bit more broken in perhaps and I'm going to try to find some actual match grade 300 blackout ammunition. Unfortunately, the local store that I went to uh, didn't have much of anything other than what I use today. So I did grab what I had access to, but I'm going to go ahead and do a follow-up video with this rifle just so you guys can get a better basis and better understanding. So on average, we're getting about two inches at 100 yards. Not the worst, but definitely something capable as a hog gun, and that is what this is intended for. So, again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and have a good one, guys.